right. Welcome, everybody, to Season 2, Episode 2 of the Pokemon Speedruns Podcast. Uh, my name is Etiquette, one of your hosts, and we are here today with um, other hosts, Iron. Hello. Uh, Jordan97. Hello. And special guest, Whom is DS? Hello, hello. Uh, Skoa Gogo will potentially be here late. Um, had some IRL commitments, so we're going to go ahead and go on without him for now. Um, so before we get into some of the notable runs, um, one little piece of news coming from the Switch Pokemon speedrunning community. Um, we now have a leaderboard split between the 1.0, 1 1.1, 1 .1, um, and 1.2 plus uh, versions. So uh, this was the update that came along with the Isle of Armor DLC. Um, introduced a bit of lag when it came to uh, some loading times, as well as um, you know certain certain actions that you take in battle, things like opening your your bag and stuff like that. Um, so it's been known for a while, basically since June, that this was the case, but we sort of wanted to wait until the game stopped coming out with updates, uh, at least stopped coming out with DLC to see if uh, those load times have changed at all. Unfortunately, they haven't. So uh, actually, I think, Jordan, you were the one who spearheaded the timing to figure out the difference, uh, or at least the magnitude of difference between the two versions. Um, and then we had a unanimous vote to split the two leaderboards so should be yeah. interesting yeah it was a uh, me and aspect for the most part and it was a nightmare i never want to do anything like that again <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it's, it's definitely something i've started myself uh, not specifically with the the version differences here but doing digital versus physical um and it's it's a daunting task to say the least, but it's good that it was done. Um, it, I think it's a good change overall, uh, and hopefully it'll bring some more competition back to this game uh, outside of the DLC category, which we will definitely be talking about uh, pretty soon. Um, but yeah, so uh, moving into notable runs, uh, we're going to start today with the 3DS games. Um, so what we're looking at here is five up a mains, uh, x any percent second place run uh 342 flat a uh, really good early game in this run i uh, had a 52 22 halucha split which is uh you know very good split and basically managed to keep that pace uh for the rest of the run it was roughly record pace uh through the movie section in the flare base uh, and it lost about 20 seconds to taking an extra elevator ride heading toward lysander 2 um, also mixed missed rock tomb and got paralyzed on the bridge so the the end game has a bit of time saved for him uh, but overall really really solid run uh, got this time pretty quickly too wasn't even spending that long on xy before getting this so uh, pretty pretty impressive to see um, next run here is same person different game uh, so this is five up it means Alpha Sapphire third place time, uh, 307 16. Uh, this was an absolutely amazing start. Um, that kind of, I don't want to say fell apart because the rest of the run was still pretty good, um, but had some troubles here during the Latius section. Uh, the Norman split you see there is the fastest Norman split anyone has ever gotten um, by over 30 seconds. So it was. Uh, he splits on the badge get instead of the fade out. Um, most people split on the fade out. This was a 121 Norman. And 122, like 31 was the fastest Norman we've had before this. So incredibly good early game uh, with a not very good Mudkip. Um, had some troubles in the Latias section. We can see here he got crit by the Sceptile on Rival 4. Um, and then Kyogre was okay. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. He also had a run a couple days ago that was on record pace through uh, Glacia and ended up getting sheer colded by Glacia. So uh, seems like he's 
definitely not done with the game yet. We'll probably be talking about him again next month. Yeah, it's one thing, like, Fire Robert, he seems to have adapted really well to the 3DS games. Yeah, he, he's somebody who was around, like, way, way back, 2012, 2013, um, doing mostly things like uh, yellow, gold, silver, stuff like that. Uh, disappeared for years, literally. <laughs> um, and then came back at the end of last year, uh, sort of on a mission with all the 3DS games. And it'll be interesting to see where he decides to go after Oras. Uh, next up here rounds out the 3DS section. Uh, this is Thomas Patrick WX, also known as T-Pat, uh, getting the Elite Four Round 2 record in Omega Ruby with a 4-16-15. Um, really solid run overall. Uh, second ball Rayquaza, which is a pretty big RNG point about almost four hours into the run. Um, the only big issues were getting confused by Mighty Yena in the Weather Institute, and then the fight we're watching here, uh, Sydney, basically missed two overheats. And by missing overheats, you kind of mess up your uh, PP for the rest of the Elite Four. So it, it was really good that he was able to, um, you know, figure something out and get through that issue. The uh, the any percent time for this was a 307, which is a really good time. Uh, I think his PB in any percent is like a high 306. So if he didn't do a lethal round two and just focused on any percent, it would have probably been a PB there. Um, the Groudon he had was really good for the post game. Uh, good attack, good speed. The Rayquaza was okay stat-wise, not amazing. Um, and then comparing against the old record, which was a 418, a uh, high 418, he saved about a minute during the main any percent section, another minute in the post game uh, because he had a better grout on, and then saved about 30 seconds on the final fight just because he crit the Metagross. Um, the way that, that that fight works is you... You purposely use a move that's going to knock the Metagross into heal range because he's more likely to go for Giga Impact. Um, if you don't get Giga Impact, then he has a chance to heal. Um, normally, he goes for Giga Impact, so you don't have to worry about him healing because he can't move, and then you can just KO him the next turn. Um, but yeah, he was able to save 30 seconds because of that, which is really good. So this will be a this will be a tough time for anyone to beat, um, but it is definitely beatable. I should say it's not a not a perfect run. Second ball Rayquaza is about thirty to forty seconds. So, um, but overall, it's it's really good and it's really you know impressive that T Pat was able to pull this out. I know it's been one of his goals to get the record back after I took it a couple months ago. All right, um, moving on to the switch section, we had a, quite a few runs here. Um, this is Echi's Let's Go Eevee second place run. Um, and we're seeing basically the one bad part of the run is hitting the spinner. Um, that looks way riskier than it actually is. Uh, the trainers in this game have very, very narrow vision. You can actually sneak through if you hug the wall. Uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't able to do that. This run was really good. Uh, this was a mid to high 302 pace coming out of Rock Tunnel. Um, had a EV, which same times uh, having plus attack. The spinner that we're seeing here cost him about 50 seconds, so it didn't exactly cost him a 302, um, but it would have been really close. The Starmy he got was really good special attack, not very good speed. However, um, one of his earlier catches in the run had given him three quick candies, which essentially anyone doesn't know. Let's go, basically the stat candies will literally give an extra stat point to whatever stat you use it on. Uh, so he was able to give himself three extra speed stats um, and was able to, you know, outspeed the things he needed to just by doing that, which was really good. Uh, I know still going for, there's a, a few people that are going for a 301 right now. I think he's going to be happy with a 302, but uh We'll see how that goes. I believe Edge is actually been pushing for 301 pace. He's actually doing attempts specifically to try and get that. Yeah, yeah. I just meant more along the lines of if he ends up with a 302, ah. he's not going to, you know, be sad about it or anything like that. 
Better, isn't it? Uh, next run here, this is uh, Joker Sleeps new world record in Let's Go All Attainable Pokemon. So this is sort of like the catch em all um, well, single player catch em all category. Uh, this run was really, really good. Um, had some really good luck throughout, um, aside from this one fight here. Um, the there are a couple of like really trouble Pokemon to catch in the run. Um, a lot of like one or one to five percent spawns that you need to get. Um, had a really fast Scyther, which is a one percent spawn. Uh, was also able to get Squirtle on Route Twenty Five, which is very rare. Um, and that saves quite a bit of time because normally in order to get Squirtle, we have to catch 60 things and then go talk to the lady in Vermilion. Um, but because he caught one naturally, he doesn't have to do that. Um, another thing that was really good was in Victory Road, was able to get Hitmonlee by first spawn. Um, normally, a more consistent way to do that is to chain Um one of the you know chaining mechanics will allow the special spawns to spawn more often and he didn't even have to do that just got the hitmon lee right away so that was really good um but yeah this this fight here this lance fight uh messing up the elite four really cost him that that sub 520 so i know he's probably going to be pushing for that pretty soon yeah he, he's also said he's going to push for that he also said to mention that Pikachu is the superior version. He specifically <laughs> uh, requested me to say that. Yeah, so for all obtainables, I actually agree with that. Um, I don't... You can't convince me with any percent yet, but with this category, I believe it is. Um, the, the main difference between the two games in this category is in order to get uh, either Persian in this game or Arcanine in the other game, you have to catch five... Growlithe's in this game and Meowth's in the other game and Growlithe's are just easier to catch and more like the area that you catch them in is better for making things spawn than the area you catch Meowth in so it's um yeah you won't get any argument from me in this this category yeah, and who knows maybe sometime soon Pikachu could overtake Eevee uh, yeah, it's it's certainly certainly possible. There's enough people going for it, so. Um, all right. So this here is the new Pokemon Shield 1.2 uh, record. Um, this will probably change hands quite a few times over the next month or so. Um, this is uh, Snarem getting a 414 uh the old record was a 414 25 so this is a 414 12. um this time is you know pretty solid overall um definitely improvable the arcanine here was really good stat wise except for the speed and then the excadrill was a very similar case um, it was a brave nature so it had minus speed uh but really really high attack so that was pretty good uh, looks like he had some trouble here catching the actual Drillber, uh, losing about three minutes. So um, definitely, definitely improvable. Um, hope to see something closer to like a, you know, a 410 or a 411 next time around. Uh, the the 1.0, 1.1 record in Shield is a 407. So uh, it'd be cool if we can get the 1.2 time down to at least like a 410 pretty soon hopefully so all right uh so two more runs here in the switch section uh first this is uh carolio's sword any percent with dlc uh new japanese record this is first ever sub four for japanese um this was a 359.44 um we can see here you got a crocodile um and crocodile is what we sort of believe to be the best pokemon for this category right now uh so it was really good to get that uh first round crocodile so really really fast getting out of dynamax adventures uh, only one extra encounter which in a game where we don't use repels or anything um one extra encounter is actually really good uh very rarely do you get a run with zero extra encounters um 
other than that, I don't know to do much about this run. Um, I know Japanese timing ends after credits, so this is like a 355 with English timing. Uh, Japanese text, obviously, you know, changes that, so it's not a direct comparison, but sort of gives you a reference point for that one. Yeah, just one thing about that encounter as well. It was, I, I don't think anyone's had like an encounter like it, or it not many people ways. It was like an ingrass encounter. Like with the exclamation oh. mark. So oh, okay. It, that was, I think I think it was because because it was just outside Spikemouth and in that grass section there was maybe something that popped up that was in the overworld that popped up. He ran back and it just happened to be the thing that popped up prior. Right. So it was quite unfortunate, but still very impressive run. Um, and I'm gonna let Hoom take this one away. <laughs> yeah, so this was uh, my sub four on English, which also got Crocodile, and <laughs> yeah, I was just grinding out attempts basically every single day, grinding uh, not necessarily for Crocodile, but for just something really good first in, and like I hadn't seen a Crocodile since probably like when I first learned about this category. So i would just been trying a bunch of other different things, creating a whole bunch of different routes. Um, but yeah, then I saw the Crocodile second den on this run, and I was like, all right, we're going to try and go with this. And I figured, even though I was going to lose a bit of time to it being second den, it should be fine. Um, but Crocodile is yeah, a lot better than I remembered, too. It just is able to provide so much good coverage for the entire run, and it's insane. Like, you don't really need to buy any vitamins. You can just skip so many different things. Um, it's really bulky. So, yeah, there's it's extremely safe as well. Um, and this was just like a neutral crook, like nothing all that special about it. And it was able to just sweep through everything. Um, but yeah, other than that, this run I just played really well since I've been grinding it out a lot. So, I yeah, my... Actual gameplay was better in this run than most of mine. The only thing is this run did hit like four extra encounters, which is not great, but for my usual standards, that's about average. So I was fine with that, especially since this ended up getting 358 anyways. Um, the only other thing I have to say about this run is uh, I actually ended up catching a rufflet on Route 8, Specifically because I saw it from the Japanese record. So I figured, all right, let's try this out and see if it works. And yeah, Rufflet's pretty good. It's nice being able to avoid the uh, the extra deaths from Earthquake. Yeah, cause, like, you've also rerouted, oh, I don't know how much to say rerouted, but you've definitely looked into a lot of the other routes as well and, and updated them. Yeah, I've updated uh, all of the, like, S, A plus, and A tiers, and then certain A minus tiers as well. All because I was hoping, like, okay, if I get one of these as my first den, I have a chance of going for sub four. But apparently, all I needed all this time was just a random crook run. <laughs> Didn't even need to be first den. Yeah, and you also mentioned with the execution. I think you're probably the only person mad enough to be doing double inputs on the move selection as well at this point. Which... Well, I've seen Edgar do them. I was but... gonna say, I do it. <laughs> do you do it? Yeah. I thought you, I thought that like on the moves itself, I thought that was the one thing you refused to do. No, I do it. That from etiquette. <laughs> yeah, I do it on I do it on move select too. Ah, all right. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Certainly gotten quite consistent with it though. Like I I don't think I made any mistakes with this run. Maybe I made like one, but I yeah I've been doing it so much that it it's just a natural thing now. Fair enough. And EMT, so whom? <laughs> whom? <laughs> yeah, so... So this is the most popular PMD category. No quick saves, no wonder mail for the original uh, Blue Rescue team. So this run is uh, no RNG manipulation, no uh, allowed passwords to generate your own missions. Uh, this is just you play with what the game gives you and try to beat as fast as you can. So how this category works for like top level runs now is uh 
in a similar way to how Ambercent with DLC, you kind of grind, like you play through the beginning over and over again just to get a certain Pokemon from there. Uh, what we do for Blue Rescue Team is we play through the beginning of the game over and over again uh, until we check the shop and we find the Frustration TM. And Frustration is just really good because it's a fixed 45 damage as long as you don't eat too many gummies. Uh, and it's guaranteed to hit uh, unless you get some sort of accuracy debuff. Um, and 45 damage is really good throughout the entirety of any percent. And if you have three, you can pretty much kill anything uh, throughout the any percent run except for like bosses. Uh, so what we do for this run is we'll usually grind out uh, for the first like 15 minutes or so, get a bit of money, and then if we see Frost in the shop, then we'll take the run. If not, then uh, we'll reset. And because it costs about 3,000, uh, you like it takes until around like 15 20 minute mark so at least it's not as long as like the sword category but it's uh it's still a decent like reset grind but there's and because like it's so grindy uh, a lot of people just choose to not go for the frost strats like really i'm the only one that does it too consistently and so this was actually a run that didn't go for that which makes it even more impressive but Secure is also just a god at, like, anything PMD, so it makes sense. Um, but yeah, he, he's actually put in a lot of attempts in this category recently. And, yeah, his start to this run, considering there's no frustration, which helps mostly in the early game, uh, like, his start was actually pretty comparable against, like, my frustration starts, usually. So that was nuts. Um... But yeah, then didn't get double chestnut, so it was time loss around... Uh... Actually, no, I think he did get double chestnut, but he got a really slow uproar. Because 10 minutes is very, very long. I think my gold split is like a 4 or 5 minute, and I'm sure that Secure has probably gotten like really good times like that too. So yeah, he got a bit unlucky there. But yeah, this is just a nuts run because yeah being able to use double slap still works really well it's just frustration has so much viability and versatility that it's it's just so good for going for any sort of sub 230 attempt so seeing it without frost is pretty incredible i've only had like one run myself that has done it without frustration so it's pretty nuts uh, I mean, like, I've noticed as well, like, from doing this, Secure has been getting a lot, of, a lot of the emulator world records. Mm -hmm. he used to be like one of the better players, just based on that, from an outsider looking in. Yeah, it's and it's it's hard to accurately describe how it is for PMD, just because comparing emulator against Wii U and DS is kind of hard, mm -hmm. but. Uh... Yeah, it's like if we were just talking about pure times, Secure is pretty much crushing everybody by a mile. But there is also just an inherent emulator advantage because playing on a controller for PMD or on a keyboard is just a lot better than on like a Wii U gamepad. And you also have like much less uh, input delay on emulator. Because I've noticed that when I've done certain runs uh, for Explorers of Sky, and yeah, it's like I can play way, way faster on emulator than I can on uh, Wii U or DS, but emulator is like slightly slower, so it makes up for that a little bit. But yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, Secure is just an amazing runner. It's been yeah. putting a lot of work into it. Uh, speaking of Explorers of Sky, though. Uh, <laughs> might... Yeah, so... Uh, so this is the Beat Dark Eye category, so it is, it's a bit closer to like uh, a 100% category in a sense, or like a complete post game would be better. Um, so after you beat Dialga, you have a whole bunch of stuff that you do uh, where it eventually leads you to having to beat Dark Cry to uh, save the world again. Uh, so this category goes through all of that stuff to 
uh, to yeah beat that as quickly as possible. And beat Darkrai for a long time, like especially this no wonder mail category has been more so of a meme that's like raced every once in a while just for good fun. But Yimo's actually been doing it a lot. And yeah, for a long time, Cheese was really the only one that ever ran no wonder mail. Like I ran a bit of wonder mail and it's been seeing more and more uh, interest as of late, especially now that there's like a whole complete skip that like skips half the post game. Actually, more than half, really. Uh, but it's not able to be done in no Wonder Mail because you need to use Wonder Mail code to do so. So this category hasn't really changed that much since like when Cheese was running it. And Cheese, this was probably the category that Cheese granted the most. Uh, and he was able to get, I want to say it was like a 851 or something. It was something like pretty high, uh, like but barely under 9. And he was really proud of that run. Uh, and Yimo grinded for a while and then finally barely beat Cheese's time. And that was a big deal. And then this run came out of nowhere. Like, there was not really any new strats. It was just this run got super lucky for so long, especially in post game, because there's just so many huge RNG sections where there is one section of the game where you need to collect a bunch of these unknown stones in order to progress through a dungeon. And okay. yeah, I remember he got through that really, really fast, which can definitely help save like 10, 15 minutes or so off your run if you get a really good section. So yeah, he he just got an amazing run with this. Fair play to Yumo and uh, again with Yumo. And yeah, <laughs> so Yumo also recently did a uh, a... Explorers of Sky recruitable, and this was done with no wonder mail, which has been getting rerouted for oh my god, it's been probably like a year at this point. Like it's there's just been like slow progress being made uh, between like a bunch of different people trying to see like what can be done to optimize like the no wonder mail recruitable more and more, uh, and then yeah, you know did this run and i don't remember a whole lot about it the one thing that like has been absolutely insane about this though is his kecleon recruit because normally kecleon is an endeavor that can take at best maybe 30 40 minutes and at worst uh rob was once grinding for kecleon for about 14 hours so it's a point zero or it's a point one percent chance uh in blue rescue team and i think it's a 0.5 in sky i need to double check that one but it's either way it's just incredibly low odds to actually recruit the kecleon um because yeah you have to trigger the shop visit and then you're just grinding out kecleons and like the way we do it is we hide in the wall because that way kecleon can't attack us and it just makes it a little bit easier but yeah you need to get to at least level 99 hold the golden mask uh, and yeah, you have to be killing all these incredibly strong kecks, which can take quite a while. Uh, and then this run, he got it in about 50 kecks, which is by far the fastest anybody has ever recruited Kecleon by like a good 20, 25 minutes. It was kind of terrifying because yeah, nobody's ever had such a fast Kecleon. Like, it's usually something where we're just kind of sitting around and waiting and seeing what ends up happening. Um, but yeah, to see it get done so fast is just extremely lucky. Yeah, I think, like, timing it all, I just, because I was curious, I think it took, like, five minutes. Yeah, that's that's unheard of for a Kek grind. <laughs> yeah. And I, as someone who's never attacked the Kecleon in the shop, I assume attacking, or like, not attacking it, but uh, leaving the shot without pain. I assume that's why there's a billion Kecleons. Is, is yeah. Is that not something else related to it? Okay. Yeah, The when you steal from a Kecleon shop, they all get incredibly overpowered, and they start spawning at an insane rate. So yeah, that's why there's so many of these Kecleons around. Um, and if they hit you, you're, like, unless you're really, really tanky, you're, you're probably dead. Uh, but yeah, luckily by being able to go on the walls, we can avoid having to deal with most of, like, 
the scary issues with Kecleon. Honestly, the, I find it funny that he actually has a harder time getting to the stairs than he did actually getting the Kecleon. That's that's quite a rare thing. Yeah, is, is that also the reason why you use Mantai? I don't know what his base HP. I'm pretty sure though he at least has high. Is it high base special defense? Let's, uh, I don't know the base stats. It's also sometimes different in PMD anyways, but uh, uh, the reason for Mantine is a little bit more unknown to me because I don't know as much about the Sky, uh, the Wonder Mill recruit all. I know way more about the Wonder Mill one. Uh, but yeah, there's been a lot of rerouting happening with like a bunch of different sections. And I assume Mantine was chosen because uh, they seem to be getting double attacks. So okay. I don't know if it has Unburden or if there was an exclusive item that he got. But yeah, it must have been something. Yeah, that time save on Kek is pretty nuts. Uh, oh, here I see. Do you know? I also I know that you're on the board. Like I think it's eleven. Uh, so you know. I don't know this route for TCG. It's something that I kind of wanted to ask Wombro about because apparently he's been doing a lot of the routing for it. Um, but yeah, apparently TCG is doing, uh, like Bulbasaur runs now, and there are certain manips for early on fights to make it so you can just, like, instantly win them quicker. Because Glitchless, uh, like, you can't use any of the manips, or can't use any of the glitches that allow you to just, like, instantly win the fight or whatever, or break the game. Uh, but you are allowed to do save and quit, like, manips, kind of like main series. Uh, but they're just not... They weren't as routed when uh, when I was doing runs, but it seems that Huang Ru really took the time to uh, figure them out. And so I apparently that's what helped uh, start this. From there, I don't know as much. I noticed that apparently, like, the Elite Four was really, really good. But, unfortunately, I don't have much more to say other than that. Yeah. So, I mean, just, like, the quick notes that I've got on it. So, it's Chris is me with a 80% glitchless second place uh, using the Bulbasaur sign deck. It's like I think it's, like, the only Bulbasaur one that's in, like, if, if like... I think it's clear for quite a while. I don't know if it's just because it's that new or what reasons. But... It's pretty new because, yeah, for a long time, the uh, yeah the Charmander deck was, like, just really good. Okay. But, right. well, yeah, it is that's pretty very good. new, according to AJ. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. To TCG. <laughs> it's, it looks interesting seeing, like, a new really, like, top time for this game because it's been a while. Not since, like, I was running it. Yeah, and also it's, like, apparently the second ever sub-39 dome. Followed by the fastest ever dome from their memory. I think that's the Chris's own end. <laughs> but, so yeah, it seems like a very good run. I've never played the game before, but because there's, there's a marathon run that I'll be, we'll be talking about later. And just listening through that. It does that. At the very least, the thing I took away, it's got great music. But outside of that, I just don't know much about the game. Yeah, it's it's a very fast-paced run. There's a lot of things that you need to keep in mind. Um, and a lot of, like, quick execution that you have to do. But, yeah, it's it's so much about adaptability from, like, when I was running it. And that was, like, the most fun. Because you can't really talk as much while you're doing it. Unless you're just really good at multitasking, which I'm not. Uh, but it's it's really fun to see, like, all the different stuff that you can do. Kind of like lightning speed. Yeah, it's it's a very fast run. Yeah. Then the last like side game run, or like uh, from the non-main series, Rumble so, Blast. Any percent? <laughs> yeah. No so possible. Rumble Blast. Yeah, this game was so Ducky did a run of this game a long time ago, and that was the only run of this game for a long time. Um, but then for series race, we included it, and so. Rob Cruel and I were all like basically routing our own version of the category to try and figure out like okay what can we do um but then in the middle of that uh I remember like me mage just suddenly appeared out of nowhere and was had like a sub four time 
and like Rob was really happy to have gotten like the record for that game with like his uh his like five hour plus time. Then yeah, this this run came out of nowhere and was like, oh wow. <laughs> we have we have some routing work to do. I it's something that like I need to understand like what has been done differently compared to uh Rob's route because I used uh I use Rob's route for the series race, so that's what I know. I assume that this run probably just doesn't grind, since uh, the the problem that Rob had was there was a lot of sections where it was kind of vague what you actually needed, and so we basically just were getting everything that we could possibly get and not worrying about like what was good. So I, what probably has happened with this route is. Uh, me mage just knows a lot more about like okay what is actually good and useful here uh and probably not healing as much because with how rumble blast works is you can go to these different worlds uh and there's certain heal points but your pokemon will not automatically heal unless you go to one of those heal points and so being able to avoid damage is really nice um so that way you have to heal less or just getting other pokemon so you don't have to worry about uh, healing those like lower, uh, lower power Pokemon. Yeah, I got. I, I never heard of Rumble. But I heard of Rumble. I never heard of Blast. Maybe. It's yeah, it's on. Game. It's on the 3DS. It's a Gen Five game, yeah. and yeah, it feels like the the Gen Five side games are known about a lot less than some of the others. Yeah. So, I don't believe Scour has come back. I'll come in. I haven't heard this goals go up, so we'll. Well, it's not gonna have a few of them pop up, but thankfully, Skoa did leave some notes for us about the run, and Iron as well. If you're well, if anyone even just wants to pop in, that Iron specific, because turns out there was no noted runs from Gen One to Gen Three. Like, I don't, not really any times that have happened on the very top top end. I covered that one. Yeah, I know a little bit about Gen Gen Four, but not between yeah. the two of us. I think we should be able to <laughs> Ho hopefully to so. And again, with uh, Sco, who has written, I uh, wrote some notes just for us down, which you very much appreciate. So this is yeah, uh, crafted uh, crafted diamond any percent glitches world record, a three forty one forty six. Apparently, solid run overall. Uh, hard to get a good Diamond Pearl Glitchless run because of the random AI. Volknify went bad, which is why we're covering this on here. Uh, and then, like, solid early game in middle, and then leading up to the massive world record. Uh, I don't actually know how much of a world record this was. If uh, anyone happens to know. If it I'm not sure. If, did he it. have the record before he I believe got this? I did think have the did. record. Yeah, it's a minute and a half. He beat it by here. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Wait, I could just look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, a minute and a half world records ish, and yeah. So apparently, in this fight specifically, like it was a static from Raichu missing the Octillery range, and then Bullet Seed. Which is apparently so slow. Oh, okay, it makes sense. That it's so slow in Diamond Pearls due to the battle engine. Mm -hmm. seen, seen the HP bar and the experience bar. Not good. So that, that is that first run, and then yeah, that that's going before because these clips were added on. I just to be able to click X. But anyway, so this is now Dexy's Pearl any percent uh, Japanese world record. If you want to go through the little thing that uh, Skoa gave us, right? Yeah, so uh, as we all know, Dexy's God Gamer. Um, he actually beat out Skoa Gogo's PB in this and record by one second. Uh, this is offline. Um, I think we saw... Did Skoa, Skoa beat the English record in this, I believe, recently as well? We might have covered that last month. No, so but, I wish um, it was two months ago, on the day of the podcast, Skoa beat the English record. That's right, record. yes. The last yeah. month... On the day of the podcast, go and beat the Japanese one. So. Oh shit! Yeah, it's yeah. So it's a really pretty solid run. Obviously, yeah, it's very short, so anything that goes wrong at all uh, can be costly here. So, but pretty strong uh, early game, uh, stronger than Skoa's, and he managed to keep it for the rest of the run. So, 
not much to, uh, I'm not sure what we've highlighted here, but <laughs> um, not much probably went wrong here in this run, yeah. I would imagine. I mean, just in this, I think I just picked a random section. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything of it. I think I've shown I've shown like the tweaking bits before, and I think there's there's gonna be a tweaking bit coming up in not this one but the next one. Uh, this is also random, just as a heads up. But this is Dexy's Diamond Pearl, eighty percent glitchless Japanese world record, day three twenty nine twelve. Apparently, just overall a very very solid run and nothing to pick at, which means I don't know what to talk about. Uh, I'll no, it's just that. cool. You can get both records in in both this game, the glitched and the glitchless, in the same month. So pretty solid. Yeah. Again, just to repeat earlier. Dexy is a god gamer. Then finally, not a uh, podcast. This wasn't done on the, today, to be fair. So <laughs> glad that Sco actually did a bit earlier. But Sko is plat and you've sent world record. So both ten to rules were apparently first try. Zero miss on the fog route. Where That's really good. Yeah, forty percent chance. Yeah, your accuracy just drops like a rock in that section. Yeah. Uh like only a few missed weeks apparently, which I guess we're seeing here. I I, I would not be able to tell if a tweak went wrong. I would just think, oh that's probably just no, part of it. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no I, I did catch the end of this it was it was a good run for sure but yeah and apparently just the only bad places was Mars one split Faulkner and Barry split uh, splits which I assume were towards the end that Barry like the last Barry fight uh apparently also the best row ups uh, row arc split ever yep. for platinum in any percent so yeah there's really one actually one thing he yeah there's one other thing he didn't put down here, but he was, I think Skull was trying to work on a gold, a row with Golduck. Um, so this is the original, I wouldn't say it's the original, but this has been the any percent route in a while you get. Well, initially it was one Tentacruel, and then Worcester, I think, ended up going to two Tentacruels. And there was talk about switching over to Golduck, which is on paper faster, but Skull got such a good time here. He beat the record by almost three minutes, uh, which is incredible. Yeah. Uh, he thinks that even with Golduck, it'll be a challenge at this point. Yeah, so, congrats, Skoa, who is, again, with uh, real life things popped up. And that's why he's not here. But again, thank, thank you for the, these notes. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the last note to run. As I said before, nothing particularly happened uh, in like the, that was like a top three run. That's typically what I've put in with these and like what yeah other people put in so nothing really happened there though there was some there was i think there's like a 203 or a couple of 203s and five red leaf green we'll see them in the lead ball roundup though yeah there's a lot of people grinding at attempts in that because of the tournament going on right now so and we had poker guy grinding for yellow he ultimately decided to take a break from that but a lot of close calls there yeah now in a flip of events, we have a million marathon runs. <laughs> People have been busy, so I guess I'll push this one onto etiquette. Um, yeah. So this was this was actually a marathon that was happening during the last podcast. Um, so this is the Immerman Angels marathon. It was held over on Kizaron's channel, um, and this is T Pat doing Omega Ruby Elite Four Round Two. Um, got a 428 which for a marathon is pretty good um that's like 10 minutes off of at the time what his pb was uh we obviously saw the the new record earlier um this was a fifth ball rayquaza in a timid groudon so definitely had a bit of struggles in the end game but luckily was able to pull it out um and yeah really solid run overall from tpat Um, and then this is me uh, doing a Pokemon Sword any percent with DLC run, um, just over 410. I'd like to point out that my live split said 409.59, uh, but the official one was a 410.01. I uh, 
used a Noctowl for this run. It was it was pretty good. Um, Echoed Voice is kind of busted um, if you know how to use it right. So I uh, was able to to put up a pretty decent time with that. Uh, and the other notable thing about this run is sort of what we're looking at here, which is uh, everything was named Warteb. Uh, everybody donated the trainer name, the main Pokemon name, the Sobble name. All of that was ended up being Warteb. So had a really interesting <laughs> run in terms of narration. Uh, so, I think, like, so this is this was also going on, I think, last time. Yeah, yeah. the The marathon itself was going on. Um, this run was a bit later in the marathon. So this is Cruel uh, doing a Shield Galarian Star Tournament run. So this is sort of like the the culmination of all of the story in the game, uh, main story, DLC stories, and post games. Um, did it in a bit over eight hours. Um but just under estimate there had a pretty rough start and was unable to get the Suicune, which is normally what's used um, from the Dynamax adventures, uh, but was able to improvise using a Sigilyph and then um, had to do some backup strats to get a, enough Dynite or to proceed with the story. Normally you get Suicune, even though you don't need it um, and it's slower than some alternatives like Crooked Isle, you typically grab the Suicune anyways, because in order to progress in the Crown Tundra story, you need to have eight Ninite Ore, which you would have for free if you do the Suicune stuff. So um, so a little bit of a backup strats, but overall, pretty solid marathon run. And like, so also a really, really long thon. And arguably, if like, I think it's a miscellaneous category. So I might have missed, like, part of the reason why I missed this, but this is a... Uh... Well, who would be better to talk about this one uh, run in particular? Yeah, so... Uh, so this run was, from what I remember, was kind of like a filler run. Um, but yeah, she's did Sky all special episodes. As you said, it is a miscellaneous category. Uh, how it works is Sky has these five different special episodes that you unlock throughout the story. And so this category just does all of them in a row and you remove everything that you have like in storage before the run, and then you can use items between the special episodes during this run. Um, so the thing about this, though, is that the start of this ended up being the uh, just an individual level world record for Igly Buff the Prodigy. And the thing that makes it so crazy that this world record happened during a marathon is that, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Secure was also very much into this category, as well as myself. And the two of us were having, like, actually a pretty big war to, like, try and get the world record for this category. And ultimately, he won. And he got, like, a mid-31. And that time, like we were both in pain like trying to grind that out was honestly one of the most brutal things i've ever done that was it's just so frustrating because there's really just hardly anything you can do and then she's got this low 31 for igly buff <laughs> in the marathon run and it was just insane like i couldn't believe it but yeah his like every single dungeon he had was just incredibly lucky and he was even wasting a bit of time to go out of his way to get extra items for other episodes. But he was just getting such good stair luck that it didn't matter. So it was just an incredible time. Like, I, I honestly couldn't believe it. And, like, he... I think he really did need, a, like, an amazing run like that. Because he's been in a bit more of a, uh, a rough streak with PMD. So that was nice to see. And then ultimately he PB'd for this category as well, like, as a whole. Uh, he ended up getting, like, a 305, I believe. Which, uh, yeah. 12, I think. Is oh, 304, okay. Yeah. I guess close, but not correct for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a little bit off my PB for the category. But yeah, even still, just the start of it was honestly pretty hype for the marathon. Yeah. So then, with uh, this next run, uh, Alathon presents Sun, uh, Sun Strong. It's the, uh, the marathon. And 
done with the trading card 80%. Yeah, and this, like, I yeah, not know much about the run, but it was like, it was very, it was entertaining to watch. Just like the, I mean, like the back and forth and just like the general commentary. Someone who doesn't know about the game. It, it kept me interested. And it was one of those runs, I like, want, definitely one of the better marathon runs I've seen, which I've been watching a lot of marathon runs lately with how many there's been. <laughs> but with like, the actual specific stuff itself, I don't know much, so that'd be better. Again, if whom you know anything about this. Um, nothing more that I can say, uh, compared to what was mentioned before. Um, because yeah, this is the, yeah, it's the same category, but, uh, well, actually, the Mewtwo is something that is, uh, that I remember from when I was running. I don't know if that's in the Bulbasaur route as well, um. But yeah, essentially the way you get past this part in particular is you end up getting uh I forget how you got the me too, it's been so long. I but I, I, uh, no worries if it's been <laughs> well I put you on the yeah, really a bit as well, because I had nothing to talk about with this. <laughs> yeah, uh I feel so bad because yeah, I, I really need to refresh myself on TCG because it's just been uh, it's been what at least a year and a half since I last touched uh, Glitchless. So, yeah, I don't know. Someday I will actually like begin relearning this category, and then if you need help for the podcast, I will I will at least have more information then. That's yeah, fair enough, because I've, I've definitely been relying on you a lot for the Mystery Dungeon stuff. <laughs> so, any more of that would obviously be welcome. Uh... Next run though, again, same marathon, uh, Conception N2 with Soul Tower of Two Fists, get Urshifu. Uh, it's been, ended up finishing with a 142.57. Uh, like, it was a, like, so, this is actually like an alternate route that's fairly competitive. It's not as quick as Sobble, but definitely a interesting route. I think it was made originally by... Uh, range of squids and I think Rise can adapted the the notes to make it a bit more uh, viable at a higher level. But yeah, it was a good amount and, like a good amount and, oh no sorry I was reading thing above there. It was just kinda like below uh, the estimate with a 14257. Uh but that's partly down to having eight minutes to look for blissies to grind with, which is not anything you can control. Uh, there was also a death in the tower to uh, and then K, but yeah. Overall, overall, it was like a a decent run, and like, it could have been a bit better. And actually, does a bit better in a, a later marathon, but we'll get to that then. Uh, then moving on to one of the few things related to Gen One to Gen uh, One to Three. Iron, are you still here? Because I know Iron is. I am. Be... Okay. Yeah, I don't need to go for a bit. I. Uh... But um, yeah, this is a uh, showcasing of a TAS of Fire Red um, 8%. And this is actually quite an old run. I don't recall exactly how old, but it's well over five years old. It's probably even more um, by MK Dasher. And uh, as you can see, we're not using uh, Squirtle or Charmander. We're using a Clefable. And obviously with TAS, we can manipulate everything, get crits as needed. Uh, and this run is pretty fun because uh, Clefable picks up Metronome, and especially in the Elite Four, you uh, manipulate <laughs> the Metronome to roll. Pretty much, sometimes it's the only move that can knock out a uh, specific poke in the Elite Four, uh, which is pretty cool to see. And uh, I think, I'm not sure if this is Tonk Console verified or not by uh, by Travis, but. Um, this is very good um, showcasing of this task. There are a couple. Of, I mean, I'm not sure if there are others on commentary as well. I know that JP did commentary along with uh, I can't remember the other guys who's doing around two tasks routing right now. Uh, an um, open closure, I think. That sounds right. Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, this is just a really cool run to watch. If you haven't seen it before, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, pretty much just making use of. 
the normal type Clefable with. And you pick up Mega Punch and Mega Kick in the run, uh, which anyone who's played Fire Red, uh, we all hate that move. Um, but obviously with the task, we don't have to worry about it missing. So uh, pretty fun to uh, to see that. Yeah, and apparently the Fire Red Leaf Green Round 2 task, did we show that a couple of Oh, like, have like a bit of that a couple of months ago? We, we might have, yeah. Yes, I think we did. Yeah. Uh, it is being reroded, though, I believe. But yeah, there or, was that. like, or, or re recorded. Then, mid, uh, I get I, I was about to say Midwest Speed Fest because that's in the column, but no, the, this was Mid Spring Speed Fling. But yeah, I think with Let's Go So Isaac, it would be much better to talk about this. Um, yeah, so this is JS doing the baton pass for Pokemon Let's Go. Um, pretty good run overall um it was a bit overestimate mostly because it was trying out some untested um strategies using flareon and omastar um also pretty bad starmie and death to archer which is what we have conveniently highlighted here um also just like you know like a, a typical let's go marathon run uh did a bit of fooling around catching things like kangaskhan and onyx um but Overall, it was a really good showcase of the of the run. This is this is a really cool route. Um, I know that Jay Ash and Kerbis and some others have put a lot of work into um, making this Baton Pass route really good. Uh, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool to see. And again, this might be more for whom the <laughs> Cruel with Poke Part We Pikachu's adventure. Um. See what can I talk about with Park? Because the thing about Park is that it's probably one of the most safe marathon runs out there. Because it's most of it's not really RNG based. Like actually, this section right here is one of the only like main parts of RNG because you have to hit this uh, this switch for a drill, uh, and then it's a chance that you're going to get an Iron Ore or a Gold Nugget. Uh, and if you get a gold nugget, then you have to hit the drill again because you need two iron ore to progress with the story. Also, oh, yikes. And that's one of the other RNG parts is Torkoal, which will sometimes just randomly attack you. Uh, and if so, then you just feel bad for a while. But it looks like you only got hit once, which is nice. Sometimes Torkoal can actually chase you pretty much all the way until you get to the furnace and then some because Torkoals are just very upset. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, yeah, this game is more, yeah, it's, it's very much a beginner friendly game and speed run. Uh, and on top of that, he was also able to get quite a nice PB in this marathon run. Went from like a 240 down to a 231. So very solid improvement with this. Yeah. I should also point out this is from rules perspective because this was the version that was highlighted uh, I don't think they highlighted it on UKSG or at least at the time when I grabbed this mm. That's this isn't technically the marathon but this was the run that was done at the marathon so that's why it does not look like a normal marathon layout but then like I said apparently I forgot to pick a section for this I mean to be fair this Actually, I could probably just pick anywhere with this run. Uh, except here. <laughs> All right, uh, go with there. Actually, this is probably the best way because this is a questionable off. Oh, just before what happened, it was a bit of a questionable distance from flexing. But yeah, this is a cruel uh, soul shield flex on four mums specifically, which was like just a yeah, which was like a bonus filler run. Uh, he also flicked some Charizard and uh, got a PB with that because I don't think he'd done a run of that one. Uh, and I think as well, apparently, a PB with flex on just Mum itself. But yeah, it was just like a fun little additional run just to fill out some of the time. I don't, it was not planned beforehand, but still. Finally, finally got some flex on representation in Marathon. Actually, I think you might have done one a while ago i can't remember but either way it's nice to always have more if it's already been shown before uh 
but I think we've got someone here who knows much more about this run. And this is them. <laughs> oh, hey, this is me. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire in the Speed Docks uh, launch party marathon. So um, this was a bid war between the two games. Uh, ended up doing Alpha Sapphire here. Uh, overall, this run was kind of a train wreck. Um, the, every single, uh, one of my Pokemon had some bad stats. Uh, the Mudkip here was really bad attack. Um, pretty good special attack, but pretty bad attack. And then, um, the Latias was, like, very mediocre. The Kyogre was very mediocre. Um... But the the main issues were a death or a death to Hideki. Um, it was a second try Mudkip. Um, I didn't have. I only have one Alpha Sapphire cartridge, so I didn't have a backup. Uh, so I was sort of at the mercy of the game. And then um, I also got crit by Norman, I believe, on the the last turn that I can get crit. So. Um, it was a pretty rough run overall. It ended up being a 310, uh, which 310 without credits. Um, typically, Oras Marathon runs skip credits. So um, it's pretty solid uh, in terms of like the estimate, but not not my best showing when it comes to a marathon run. It just show, sort of shows how brutal something like Alpha Sapphire can be. Yeah, and uh, I think I forgot to mention when I pass it over. This is for Edox launch party. There's quite a few Pokemon runs in here, uh, including this one uh, with Pokemon Green any percent tutorial exhibition. Which, and I'll do this to Iron. But this was a very funny run. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch this one, but. Um... The green run is obviously very short, as we all know. Um, and it's a tutorial in this in this specific case. So uh, in this run, uh, we had a lot of chaos, uh, as uh, Jordan mentioned. Uh, we have Silent Hero and uh, CC Never Ender. And Silent Hero lost count due to CC counting out loud. And we also had an emulator crack from cc as well so yeah it was like the thing as well is like specifically how cc counters i think it was like counting blocks of 20. so we go like one two three four so and so and then like hit 20 and then it go one two three four all the way through and then it'll just say 40. i think that are uh, throwing silent hero off but still mm -hmm. it was uh ah. It was funny to watch back looking over at uh, this section because I missed this. I missed this one as it happened, so them laughing their heads off was brilliant. And uh, I think this was straight afterwards with a snap. Hundred percent wonderful. Apparently, what window window means. So, like a twenty-four thirty-four. Like it was apparently a PB. I managed to get a PB and was like five seconds of full record with this. So like a great run. But then outside of that, I don't know. Though there is like obviously we haven't talked about the new snap because I don't think they're accepting runs yet, but definitely from next month on. Uh, it's a really fun game. Is it really fun? I've not played I've never played I played a couple before. hours last night and it's like visually, like the graphics, like really, like really aesthetic. Yeah, it really just felt, it just, it just felt, it just felt like really, like you're in the in that world, and you're like moving around and, and taking pictures and stuff. So it's gonna be interesting to see how speedruns work with that, because obviously we know that Snap, uh, the original Snap, uh, is a little bit crazy and chaotic and. Uh, I think there are a lot of glitches in it, if I recall correctly. So uh, uh, it'll be a lot different, obviously. Yeah. I don't think original Snap, at least not the any percent speedrun uses any glitches. It's just a lot of oh, like, okay. very precise, uh, like yeah, getting oh, okay. Pokemon lined up for shots. 
Yeah, so the hundred percent is this is I'm just looking it up now. It's you have to get a picture of all the Pokemon in the game, which is sixty-three. Yeah, I think as well with this guy, this is like it's specifically like a hundred percent wonderful, which is different from a hundred percent as well. So oh, is it now? Yeah, oh. which yeah, because with wonderful, you need to get like a certain amount of points on the picture to do so. Oh, okay. So I guess. Uh, it would probably be more comparable to like if you've played the new snap uh there is like the different uh what is it, like color for the stars essentially and so it would yeah, be like a diamond right. for all of them so instead mm, of being like okay. bronze silver or gold whatever you have to get like diamond on all of them yeah, it's just, as oh quick, i see yeah yeah that's a quick question so like i and you've played the new snap i know you've played the new snap uh snap room because you asked me like what time the podcast started so you could play more of it <laughs> yeah have you played it Etika? uh no i it came yesterday but i just haven't had a chance to play yet fair enough yeah but i there'll definitely be mentions of snap i think for a, a good while on the podcast with the new snap coming up or with the new snap with the rooms for that coming up uh it's does anyone know how long they're waiting before they're allowing runs on board, or...? Uh, I was May 7th. Oh, maybe it's May 7th. Oh, May 9th, okay. It's one of the two. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's the 9th, you're right. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, from, from then on, expect at least a few mentions, probably, in the, po uh, in the podcast every month for a while. Uh, but yeah, moving on to uh, Amoeba's run. With Emerald Glitchless. With the very fitting hat as well. Very nice. Yeah. I just realized I've not given much note because I must have started writing it and then got distracted by something. So, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, by the time it looked like it got a 2.36.26, so fairly clean run. Um, I didn't watch it, unfortunately, but he probably did do some play things a bit safer than he would in a PV attempt. Uh, but Amiibo's uh, working on getting his time down in this. Uh, he's got quite a lot of PVs recently. Not in a little bit, but uh, but he got third time, third try on the Mudkit Manip, which is which is not bad, I guess. But most of the top level runners are are getting it first or second try most of the time, anyway. But we all are, we're highlighting here, I guess, a really fun fight, which is Norman, and uh, this spin does a bit of a pain at times with Teeter Dance. Uh, yeah, I, he, he actually had a run going today that was looking like, like at the very least on PV pace. Like, he had, I think he had a goal split on Winona, which, like, oh, uh, nice. like a five second goal split, and it was like pretty close on like world record, even maybe from like 30 seconds off. But then, Tate Miser. <laughs> so. Yeah, he's, there's a lot of fights around that point in the run which can which can mess you up and he's been on pretty good pace he can get on good pace quite frequently so it's only a matter of time yeah i think he had a run the other day died of the true double fight where he got crit by the goal bad it was awful yeah he's been pretty unfortunate recently uh at least in terms of emerald uh so then the last one for speed dogs marathon and back to snap <laughs> Uh, it was jinx a, percent. Yeah, jinx percent between Quo and CJ. It's all good. Which, from looking at it, like Quo had like issues with like, internet connection. I think in this moment, that CJ was like doing all that, like that kind of like joking, mocking. He missed like a diglet picture, which means he ended up losing the race because of that. Along <laughs> that line, so. Maybe it's like a, a small view for you, so, but I mean, for it was all, all for fun after all. Uh, I don't what know does if... Jinx percent entail? Just getting a picture of Jinx? That would be my assumption, but also this is like a 23 minute. Oh, well, yeah, 23 minutes was close time in the end, which is that longer or very close to the any percent time? I... The any percent record is. Oh... What is it? It's about 20 minutes. Yeah, so... Mid-20s. So, a, from what I can tell, like, a Jinx percent 
run also oh god green uh, <laughs> but yeah so what jinx is in snap is if you don't get enough pokemon like uh you don't get enough like pictures of pokemon before a certain point in the cave uh jinx is more like a backup thing where you have to waste like 10 15 seconds uh to go and get a picture of jinx further in that so i assume that that is probably what they mean and then you get that picture of jinx like always it's not just a backup uh and then proceed to beat the any percent run that's at least my guess Oh, okay. okay. So then, moving on to Game Over Cancer, Spring 2021. Uh, Conception, who again with uh, Power of Two Fists, get Urshifu. Um, a much more fortunate run than the previous one. Uh, Blissey still took like six minutes. Uh, Blissey's uh, like, it's just the main, like, well, one of many major RNG sections. Uh, where you just gonna kind of hope for the the spawns. It's like a two percent spawn, but you can spawn them fairly quickly in the overworld. But yeah, it was just a, overall. It was just a very solid run. Like a like one thirty six is like a good time, especially with a six minutes looking for blisses in a marathon run where you're playing safer as well. The nine tails was, I think it was like a solid nature as well. It wasn't like anything that would cause an issue so i think you have to you have to get at least a level eight ball picks for this route just otherwise because of level seven i don't think i'd imagine it'd be because you're not high enough level to catch the slowpoke after defeating the ninjask to get uh, which you used to get experience instead of the onyx like you would use in sobble but yeah solid run like a very 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 solid so, going on to Retrothon 2021 with Pro Infernape. Doing Crystal Randomize Any Percent uh, with Iron. I, I, I just know this is an audition. Obviously, that's the only thing I know. It's the. Give it to you, Iron. Well, yeah, it's a randomizer, so. <laughs> um, yeah. He's underestimated by about 20 minutes, obviously. Estimates don't mean too much when you're dealing with uh, a randomizer, but because uh, you never know what could come your way. But uh, these are a lot of fun to watch at times because <laughs> some crazy Altish stuff can happen. Altish has Aeroblast. Yeah, so like moves are moves are randomized as well. Uh, there's other options you can do with randomizers to make things even more chaotic, like. They evolve into random things as well. Those are always fun. But uh, this is, I think, just a regular randomizer. Uh, beat the game, I guess, as well. He's going to the champ. I'm just imagining, like, if you like, just walk up to a Noldish and it just uses Aero Blast and you just get seven miles. Uh, it's just like a mini mental image that I've just gone for some reason. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a pretty solid run. Uh, time of reset, which is why that was like at 30 minutes at that point. I think something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened. Uh, but moving on to Velocity Online, which is currently going on right now, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, run from yesterday. Uh, Pokemon XD, any percent, by Spanis, uh, SRS. Uh, like a 439.57. It was like... Uh, a very very good run uh especially knowing like i think maybe it was maybe something like seven or eight minutes slower than spines's pb but i had to switch to a different save file for this because the teddy Ursa was not runnable so there's like a bit of time there and also it's a marathon in this game is not always the most kind so you can you typically do a lot to train uh yeah, just make sure you, it doesn't go too badly. I think to be fair, the overall like it was a very like safe, oh, good like when the when you need the good stuff to happen, it happened. Luckily, but not too many issues came up. I think that was the really the only fight that had like a I say a big issue, but it was just more like a 
Uh, it could have been a lot worse, but it ended up being okay in the end. But yeah, it was a good run. And once again, featuring again with uh, another run, Etiquette. Uh, yeah, so this one was yesterday as well. Um, this is an Omega Ruby run. Um, did Alpha Sapphire last time, decided to do Omega Ruby this time. Um, really, this was the only bad part of the run. Uh, we died to Hideki twice. Um, it was kind of unfortunate because we were very favored to win. Uh, this three shot range is, was about a 94% range. So I missed it there. I missed it again. Um, or yeah, so this was the successful getting past Hideki. Um, I missed the range on my first try, which also killed me. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, was a pretty solid run. Uh, Latios cooperated pretty well, and then uh, Groudon was uh, plus attack, which was nice. Um, didn't have to worry about any of the ranges in the end game. So um, overall, really good showing. This one was about a three twelve, but we included credits because um, the marathon was like an hour ahead of schedule. So they were like, "And eh, you'll still be underestimate. Why don't you just sit through credits as well?" So was able to to show off that final fight as well. Would have been about a three oh one um, Hall of Fame timing. Had a bit of a uh, issues with the end game, mostly because uh, I've just been running a lot more Alpha Sapphire lately. So I there were some key things I forgot about, mainly with like PP management and the like. But yeah, pretty pretty solid run overall. Yeah, and then the last marathon run for this month was uh, by Alan, Alan Switzer. I'll leave it to Ian again because it's Gen 1 to 3. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is uh, for the gl No Glitches Allowed Marathon, and as you can imagine, uh, it's a run where they, or a marathon where they showcase runs without glitches. Uh, they do allow some very minor things. For example, uh, well, I can't really give any good examples here, but um, as you can see, Alan missed uh, three blizzards on Giovanni's Rhydon. Um, I had to finish it off with Earthquake here, but his run was really good. Like, I didn't really see anything weird that happened. He did get a Gen 1 miss on like a random Raticate, which wasn't really that bad. Um, there's a really weird sound glitch at the end of Champ, and in typical Marathon fashion, it was a never seen that before, or in this case, heard that before. Uh, situation uh, so I recommend you check that out because he, he said he'd never heard it maybe someone here has who knows um, out, out of all the marathons that have a sound glitch no glitch is allowed exactly yes <laughs> yeah this marathon still going on as well um, this it started on Wednesday I believe and it's gonna be wrapping up either Sunday or Monday yeah and Speaking of the upcoming marathon runs, oh, unless was someone just about to say something there, or am I going a bit crazy? I'm probably Are you good? Okay, I'm just going a bit crazy. It happens. Uh, speaking so, the upcoming marathons, there's actually a lot of the marathons later in the month seem to have not announced their schedule yet. So there's probably going to be quite a few Pokemon marathons that are Pokemon runs in marathons coming up soon. Uh, I think, I assume GDQ will also announce theirs, so hopefully there'll be some Pokemon runs in there as well. But I'm with no glitches all seven, which is uh, in the so in an hour and a half. I've got Iron. <laughs> yeah, but. I'll be I'll be running a. I shook. I think I showed this run um, on the podcast a couple months ago. Uh, I'd say. ROM hack of the Space World demo for Pokemon Gold. Um, so yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be showing that. Um, it's a pretty long run, but it's pretty fun. Uh, there's lots of spinners, so that'll be really really fun to deal with. Uh, recommend you check that out. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting hack. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for this marathon in terms of uh, Pokemon runs. Yeah, and then. The other marathon that is currently going on right now, Velocity, uh, at uh, second of May. Has that run been removed? Or am I just blind? Let's see, 16th, 34th. Ah, okay, never mind. So it seems there was another run 
Oh, there was meant to be another Pokemon run seems to have been replaced by Neo Bomberman. So, ignoring that, the last uh, marathon run is mine. Uh, with Power of Two Fists uh, for Pokemon Sword. Uh, yeah, it's been like... Conception's been the typical marathon run for this. Uh, but you know, I, I got the world record recently and I just wanted to try and do this in the marathon for once. Also, it seems to have been pushed back uh, 10 minutes. So I'm glad I know that now. Compared to where it was before, but yeah, so this will be, should be, or oh, I'm hoping it's going to be a good run. I've got Garth and commentary with me, who will hopefully correct any mistakes I say in terms of damage output and all the stuff like that, which I've typically gone wrong before, but yeah, so that's all the marathon runs coming up for the month as of right now, and... Yep, on to the leaderboard roundup. So, there wasn't too, like I said, there wasn't any particularly runs in the top three that were mentioned for red and blue, but, or any of the gen one for three runs. But, definitely some noticeable ones still out, uh, outside of there. So, people like Yujita, for example, in 22nd with a 147.54. Uh, any others that particularly stand out, you know? Hey, oh, do you, uh, can you see Ayn? Yeah, I can see. Uh, I will point out that there's the the amount of people with like sub 150 is a lot now. Uh, this <laughs> game's gotten really optimized. I think there was a comment. I think it was sub 150. They're like a, they indicated that there was like 30 over 30 people that have gotten. Yeah, um, I could be completely wrong about that, but oh, 31st with a 149.21. It being simple, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the only other thing that's notable there, I think, or other thing that stands out to me, um, is the the hundred seventy first time Dobbs with a one fifty eight. That one's kind of cool because Dobbs is like a, actually like a a big YouTuber who's just sort of like dabbling in speedrunning, kind of like we've had Johnstone put up some PBs lately. Um, so it's just interesting to see people from like mm. outside the speedrunning community jump in and like. I don't know how long he's been doing it, but like a sub two time is definitely nothing to scoff at. So I think that's pretty cool. Also, one of the names that I recognize, Flutter Sparkle, aka Slayer, still with the unchanged name. It will <laughs> always catch me off guard that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, looking. Uh, seven, that was, and seven for any percent. That's, cause that's very optimized category. That's pretty impressive. Oh, at least it seems impressive to me. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Yellow. The Tepich with 12. And Truly in 13th. Both with one. Truly has been on a lot of runs recently as well that have died in late game. So uh, I was he could say, have a time better than this by a significant amount. <laughs> yeah, I've the amount of times in the last like couple weeks I've been pinged by hype runs in the Gen 1 through 3 Discord just for Truly is kind of ridiculous. Uh, lots of good pace runs. And then like a 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, any percent in English. Uh, the, yeah, the 11th classic time. classic one in there as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's by fun. Green Card Game got second, which we've mentioned <laughs> already. Uh, Nap. Like 15th. Uh, with Collins VG 21-23. I assume. Solid run. Seventh on Wii Virtual Console as well with a 2339. Which I can't remember if Gunlab said that Virtual Console was quicker, but I guess it might be a similar situation. Is SM64 quicker with Virtual Console, but just most people play it on the N64 anyway? Is it maybe like a similar situation to that? Or am I just making that up? Oh, that's Wii Virtual Console. Hang on. Alright, Wii Virtual Console, and then there's a Wii U Virtual Console version. Interesting. Anyway. Yeah, the records for the records for N64 versus Wii Virtual Console are separated by about... Well, the Wii U Virtual Console is like two seconds or five seconds different. And then the Wii Virtual Console is about 30. 25, 30 seconds difference. So that's at the top end, of course. There's probably a lot more runners in the N64 version. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. A few more. Uh, as Lena's name, BBB. Uh, mm -hmm. But second for Jim Lee, the castle round one. To be fair, from what I know with Stadium, it just seems impressive finishing a run. So, just with like, wrong. the amount of <laughs> the <laughs> RNG in that. That's a pain. <laughs> Gold Silver, 20th from Nerdy Nerd for like a 3 20 53. And don't have the context, but I how good uh, how good that is as an actual time, but I assume that's very good still. Uh, also, it's you'll not see, too bad at all, no. You'll also still, you'll see runs from like March as well. I think it takes it from the verified date, uh, verified date, so. Yeah, if you know it's anything with March or like February even, I think I saw earlier. Uh, when I quickly checked through this before. Uh, that's why. Uh, wait, like, only one Crystal run. Like, is, is Crystal just in like a very quiet time at the moment? In the guess? Yeah, it seems like it. I would say so. Uh, I really freeing a lot of runs. A lot yeah. of like very good runs as well. Like, I think I was talking. I, I was talking to Kid Rocker, and like apparently like this time last year, um, it was like tenth place. I think he said it was like a two oh nine. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Even now, like if we include an emulator at this point, even like a two oh three thirteen is not good enough for top ten. Like. Mm -hmm. The amount that game has been pushed in the last year. Like, how many times has the. Because, like, has a record been traded in, in the last year? Because there was Pulse like 11 months ago, I think. Pulse was. had it, Gunner had it, Shiro had it, and also um, Poke Guy had it, I'm pretty sure. All the last year. Yeah, so this time last year, the record was Gunner with a 3 or a 203 27. No, that was. Sorry, that was two oh, years wow. ago. Yeah. No, <laughs> wait. So Poke Guy oh, had just beaten the record uh, with a 20304 on April 21st of last year. And then it's gone through Pulse, Poke Guy, Gunner, and now Shiru. Yeah, so like Randall's time would have been record a year ago. Yeah. And it's not even top 10 now, which is insane. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few. Uh, all these, all these people, everyone in on that list, um, with a couple exceptions, are all in the tournament. So a lot of people grinding down their times uh, to to uh, prepare for the marathon as well. Uh, Maeve, for example, up at thirteenth, he kind of came out of nowhere, post posted in the Discord that run, and we we're all like, whoa, because we'd never heard of this guy. But that's a really impressive time as well. I find it interesting, like, people will just come out of nowhere, folks in top times. Like, like, Exarion apparently did that ages ago with Red, and... Yep. That, that, from what I've heard, that caused a lot of how PSR, like, or how the leaderboards are, like, verified with stuff today, and how... Just a lot of interesting stuff. Maybe it's just me liking a bit of, like, the history of stuff like that. I don't know, but... Yeah, it was... Not to go too deep into it, but it was basically like every case of like cheating, quote unquote, we had had up to that point was very obvious stuff. Um, and so no one like really believed Exarian cheated by any means when he when he put up that 150. But it was like it was like, wait, this guy came out of nowhere. And so from that point on, it sort of like, you know, it changed our mindset when it came to that. The verification, like you said, um, so it was. It was pretty cool. That was like right before, I think it was before speedrun.com still. So we didn't have like an official verification process. It was more like you just put your times on a wiki. Fair enough. Uh, fifth as well for Randall in Elite Four round two. B busy month for the life of Randall in uh, just in Leaf Free, uh, Fire Leaf Free. Mm hmm. You know, shout out to the one dash run, green cup regular, Gixma, with a 529.555. I need to get back to dash. 
like getting back to dash I did it twice and then haven't touched it since. It was fun. That was definitely more a game from my childhood though. Um I just noticed Shadow Phoenix, we never mentioned that. That was one I must have missed. The Shadow Phoenix with a any percent unrestricted English Wii U world record. And then Shigunware as well with the, the Japanese equivalent. So I how much of a difference in text is there between English and Japanese even with the unrestricted category? Uh for that category Yeah that one's a little bit harder because that one there's not really been any English runners that have done Japanese other than like a noob, at least for this particular category. Um I think it's still probably around like 10 or so minutes at least just because like you still have to go through all the same text uh the main difference is just how long the codes are uh but that's also kind of hard to compare because yeah. how japanese codes work is it's technically less characters but you also have to go through like three different keyboards so i i don't know how to time that yeah that, yeah that seems yeah, that just sounds like awful to try and time. Uh, also, apparently I recruited them all from you, but that was in January. Yeah, that was that was from a while ago. Uh, I think it was talked about when I was uh, on the like a guest on a previous podcast. Um, but yeah, I just finally got verified. All right, fair enough. I mean, to be fair, I imagine it takes quite a while to verify a fifty-eight hour long run. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't even submitted it until March because I was uploading it all to YouTube. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, because yeah, you do in like how, how many like how long are the parts you split into? Because I know you have a fair amount of them. Um, so for that one, I believe it was eight parts, and then they varied around like five to eight hours each. Good bit of content if you ever wanted to watch them recruit them all. In <laughs> which one was this? <laughs> The Red, Red Blue Red Blue Red Blue I mean, that was a good one. That was honestly quite a uh, quite a good time for that category. Wait, that's so no quick save and no window mail as well, so you don't get anything really. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair play. And living decks too. It's something. I uh, just, I uh, yeah, people who like, I, I said this to you as well, but like, it seems to be a, like more people or more runs than you would expect. With recruit them all recently but i just i mean I, you said it's like the same few people but you're all doing a lot of them more than i would have i, I would have expected personally yeah even just the start of this year um there's been like i wonder if there's actually been 10 recruit malls at this point that have happened now because there's been a lot also another run i've apparently missed from you with pokemon ranger i've i've been slacking here my apologies yeah, finally, any percent English Wii U world record from Mewu. Yeah, that was uh, a GDQ submission. I was just doing a random run with commentary. And that particular category I hadn't played in like two years. So I knew I was going to likely PB. And 256 is a pretty solid time, especially with me trying to figure out what to say during the run. Did you have the world record before? Uh, no, because oh. it barely got taken by Mad Bigger. Uh, oh, so yeah, I just yeah. took it back. Yeah, we, I believe we covered Mad Beggars actually. What about that? I think we did. Probably did. Uh, then, yeah, you got all the Diamond and Pearl ones here. Uh, I guess didn't talk, I didn't put the emulator one in because, like, a lot of the emulator times seem to be not like as optimized as runes. Compared to like a lot of the, uh, like the on console ones, but Spoo with a four twenty two twenty two. Uh, apparently a lot of optionals, and it was apparently nipples as well. So fair play. Uh, did I mention? Did I, I think I mentioned this one last month. I think. Uh oh wait, the time recruiter one. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, I did do that because it was. I remember talking to you about that. So yeah, yeah. Then I guess it 
I almost have made it in on the 23rd as well, so makes sense. I assume probably again putting it all out in parts on YouTube, similar to maybe how you do it, whom? Uh, pretty similar style, yeah. Uh, thoughts in 11th with a 357.28 in Platinum. Uh, pretty solid time again. I, I, anything that's like, because I, I haven't, I don't know how many runs have been done, but 11th seems like a good place position. Uh, that one was mentioned last month. That was having very close, yeah, verified on the third. I'm very close to the marathon, not the marathon, last month's podcast. Uh, I've got marathons on the brain still. Uh, is there any in this that have not been mentioned to with the uh, sky? Uh, I How's... believe pretty much all of them have been. The only thing I can think of is maybe the um, the beat dark cry run. That one might not have mentioned the one from uh, from Shiguma. I think that was uh, yeah, that was this month. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that, yeah, that one mustn't have been mentioned, if it's not on this podcast. Yeah, it was just a, there's not really too much to say about it. It used the new strats, uh, that I had, like, vaguely mentioned before where we skip, like, a lot of post game, and so, yeah, it was just a good Japanese time. Yeah, Shigamu seems to be the one who controls a lot of the, uh, like, his, a lot of the top times on the mystery dungeon runs, like the Japanese yeah, side. He, he's really good at Japanese PMD, and he runs every single possible category. Uh, like even recently, like right now, he's in the middle of a Japanese recruit them all for Blue Rescue team, uh, and he just recently grinded out a category where you recruit Kecleon and Blue Rescue team uh, without quick saves or wonder mail, and like that's the sole objective of the run. It's just to get to level 90 as fast as possible with the friend bow, uh, and then you just start killing Kex until you recruit it. Fair enough. Like, who are the other Japanese runners that are, like, up there as well? If you have... Uh, well, most of them aren't really running it as much right now, because Ado Kiba used to be, like, the huge Japanese runner that was doing stuff for years and years. Uh, he more just verifies stuff nowadays. I don't think he does that many runs. Um, there's Icarus, who she was, uh, like a really, really competitive runner for, uh, both Blue Rescue Team and Sky. Um, now I think she does just, like, a bunch of other varied stuff, because she became a VTuber. Okay. Uh, and then there was one other who I don't know the name of, uh, but they were also, like, I don't know if they've been doing that much with PMD anymore. I just remember for a little while they were putting up some good times on uh, like DS slash 3DS instead of Wii U, which most Japanese runners use. Okay. Uh, the, the Forgotten Mystery Dungeon, WiiWare, 80% English in second. Afis yeah. Kirby, 144.24. Was this yeah, like... Some... The one thing I'll say about this category is that yeah we were it's not even recent anymore but like uh recently got a uh, an english patch uh that was like custom made for the game and so we allowed like runs to be done on that english patch and only two people have really done it but someday i'll i'll try it as well there is like how many Different runs have you done at this point? Or like different categories, or maybe different games actually would be easier. Of like, Pokemon as a whole or PMD? Uh, like Pokemon as a whole, because like, I know you do like the the series race. I don't know if that I do, I don't think that covers all the games though, does it? Or, like, uh, technically not every game, because there's stuff like Hey You that's kind of difficult to emulate. Uh. uh. You're saying you don't have a copy of Hey You Pikachu lying around? Um, well, Cindy does. <laughs> Apparently, I maybe at some point in the future. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Toka with a fourth place in 
glitch. Uh, 10% glitchless. Wait, no, though, no, that is a different rune because last month he had the glitchless manipulus type. And I guess he must have uh, beaten that with this rune. And then Minnow as well in fifth. Very close behind. Like, Minnow is still pushing. Like, he's. He's pushing like Kyrie's very like very hard. Um just like again from an outside perspective. Like I wonder like I wonder how long it'll uh, take him before he's like getting close to the world record. Because like, I don't know what the world record is in Heart Gold Soul Silver. Uh, off the top of my head at least. But... It's like three thirty four or something like that. It's like low 330s, I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Minnow's, Minnow's just one of those runners, though, at the moment. I feel like you can do anything. Yeah, 333 by Buster. So, it can definitely happen. Yeah. And to be fair, like, Tucker as well. Obviously, he's oh, yeah. like, getting fourth. It's not, <laughs> not an easy feat. Definitely a lot happening in like the DS section. Uh, probably out. That's probably like the most active. Is it? I would have said like Gen 3, but nothing happened this month, technically, on the very, very top end. So maybe DS is looking like the most active area right now. Unless it's something I'm forgetting completely. Uh, but. Yeah, there are a lot of people. Another... Sorry, go on. There are a lot of people grinding Fire Red, but like, there's so many runs that could just die. Like, Cougar's been on really good pace. JP is always grinding. Like, there's a lot of people grinding for record in Fire Red. You just haven't seen anything come out of it uh, in the last little bit. Again, whom usually this last month, I'm gonna guess based on the run date, but. This this month with Poker Park Wii Pikachu's Adventure in Japanese, any percent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we talked about that last month, but uh, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> also, yeah, perfect timing, Cindy. Um, but yeah, there's not really a whole lot I can say about it because like Japanese and English are very very similar runs. Uh, the only thing is Japanese text for some of the quiz sections, which can be a little bit tricky. Um, even still, my initial goal for it was, yeah, sub 214, got it. Uh, and even though I want to go further, because I think, like, a 212 should be more equivalent to, uh, like, what my PB is on English, uh, it's still a pretty solid time, so I'm satisfied with it. And then second place, like, six and a half, seven minutes behind with, uh, Show die. Uh, I've never seen that name before. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think. Are they yeah, I believe it's new. Yeah, they weren't there. Uh, yeah, they they just recently started doing runs, from what I know. Uh, uh, enough. Uh, second in all friends for like the English, and uh, with a six point four four six, and then first in Japanese is. Actually, I just thought, can you actually just... <laughs> I could have just done this the entire time. Uh, is this the <laughs> only... It is okay. But still, uh... uh it's, it's like... 33 minutes? Is it is it that much difference? Or is that just, uh... Kind of like a, a bit more of a free world record? Well, I say free in quotations here. So, the weird thing about Japanese Park is that any percent is basically the same. But from what I have been told about Japanese All Friends, is there is certain, uh, in order to get certain, like, Pokemon as friends, you need to do a bunch of skill games with Pokemon in a row in their respective area. And if you leave, then that messes it up. And so what happened with this run is uh, it went in with, like, the English mindset of being able to just, like, you know, do that route, and it didn't work. So he had to improvise, and because this is, like, the first run ever done of the category, it didn't matter too much. Um, 
But yeah, I guess like heavy rerounding needs to be done for the Japanese version. Maybe uh maybe Josh in chat could be at the forefront of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so black and white too. That would have been covered yeah. last month with Tram. <laughs> oh. Oh wow. I didn't realize a three another three twelve happened. That's crazy. Yeah, I wasn't aware either though. Uh but still, yeah, three twelve forty eight from the cram. Uh technically happened in, in the last podcast section, but it's still to be mentioned. Also Sanjan with a three eighteen, twenty six and fourteen, just a name I recognize. Actually Ed has as well with a three twenty five. Uh oh. I thought Ed Ed normally runs on emulator, so are they just managed to get a I just managed to recently get a console capture. I think. My memory serves me correctly there. Um I already mentioned Rumble Blast, but chapter one emulator world record from new person, just new now with fifty nine fifty seven. Uh I I don't know what that means, I'll be honest. <laughs> but uh I, I how many chat like how many chapters is there in Rumble Blast? Uh no. there's five chapters. I can't really tell you much more than that because I yeah. I don't know much about the uh, the individual chapter categories. I've never run them. They weren't a thing when I was uh, learning it for the series race. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's basically just individual levels for each of these places and just trying to go through them as fast as you can. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, also with the, not also here, but with Poker Part 2, 10th place time with the Basrelian. With a 248.57. <laughs> Run all friends instead. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a common choice. Um Black uh, Black White uh, Black and White 2. Uh 13th with uh Jester with a 340.01. And then Ed Head with a 347 uh 47.43. 13th and 16th, respectively. I didn't put this in. I didn't put in your Gates of Infinity. I've missed a lot of Mystery Dungeon this <laughs> month. I should I should have been paying more attention. But how how did that run go home? Obviously um, it was World Record, so I assume well. <laughs> so, yeah, this was just a, uh, a one attempt. This was actually just to learn the new strats. Uh, as you can see, I'm like 13 minutes. <laughs> like, I was 13 minutes behind at one point. Because the new strat is, you basically just get yourself all the way up to level 32, like, immediately, and get Dragon Dance. Uh, which, unfortunately, requires a lot of Wondermail codes. And then eating those, and as you can see, the tech speed for this game is very slow. So, uh, the time it takes to put in the codes, plus the slow text for every single level up... Uh, it wastes so much time early on in the run, and I was like, okay, I don't know about these strats. Uh, but Dragon Dance is just extremely good, because being able to increase your speed in PMD is just amazing in general. You can get through, like, you can get past so many different enemies, uh, as well as give yourself a bunch of turns. And since Dragon Dance also increases your attack, uh, it's just amazing. And because you're overleveled, you also just deal more damage in general now. So it just makes the entire game much safer compared to like even what it was before when it was already like decently safe with early dual chop. Uh, and then the other change that happened was there we usually just do missions off of uh, the right board, which is just standard missions: go save a Pokemon in a dungeon or go take out an outlaw. But the left board, which we never really focused on for a long time, uh, has these challenge missions, which it turns out just instantly puts you into like a boss fight. And since you're super overleveled anyways, uh, you can actually do them very early on, which not only allows you to uh, only have to deal with one floor, it's, so it's just fighting those things, that's not the RNG of trying to find uh, the exit to that floor with the stairs, um, but you can also get extremely good mission rewards 
Uh, the biggest one being a pure seed, which allows you to just instantly warp to the stairs uh, when you eat it. And so, yeah, those two combined allowed me to go from like plus 13 to minus 6 over my PB uh, and beat Shady's uh, like record that he did, uh, which I believe was like the first run he did uh, for no instant text because uh, to practice this game. Uh, he had like an instant text cheat code put into his um, into his 3ds, so that way uh, all this text, which takes like you know well over three four hours just to like scroll through, uh, yeah, that just instantly gets cut out. Yeah, because I was going to bring it up because you seem to be like, a, well, yeah, like you got a plus thirteen there. I think at this point was it like plus. Or plus five from the looks of it so yeah wondering how you got back ahead like just... was this like your first run back as well doing this because i i don't feel like i've seen you run this before yeah this was uh like this was just the uh day after i was done with the sword grind because i was uh yeah. like now that i was done with that i was like okay well i'll i guess i can work on something else now and I figured to fill in the time, I could just do a random gates run to like relearn those strats and maybe try and take back the record. Uh, I didn't think it would be with this run. I was figuring, okay, I'm way too far behind to be able to do it. Uh, but yeah, no, Dragon Dance is just amazing. So I will actually be trying to beat this again, hopefully sometime very, very soon. Do you have an idea what you're going to go on to next? Because you're kind of into you looking at or thinking about that? Uh, well, definitely Moon. Once, uh, yeah, once I'm done with all of my like random filler grinds, I'm probably going a hard grind for Moon. I was gonna say, how can you deal with categories that long? And watch past like 58 hour category you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, all right, never mind. That's not coming. That's really gonna make any difference. Uh, but yeah, Shady in second. It was uh, was that the run you're talking about, or did you have a different? I guess based on time, it was probably that run you were talking about. Yeah, that was the yeah. run. Okay. Uh. Also, as well with uh, the Wonder Mail on emulator, in, uh, Shadow Phoenix with an 80414 in emulator second. Oh, I say emulator, it's just second, it's the emulator board. Yeah, uh, so this was that run, uh, just to quickly go over it, uh, was a race actually with Shady. So they were both doing that run at the same time, and Shady was essentially teaching Shadow Phoenix the strats while he was doing the run. Uh, okay, and yeah, in, uh, that makes sense with uh, that comment there. Um, that's a that seems like a very good time, for, like being taught whilst doing the run. <laughs> yeah, for a first ever run, eight oh four is very very good. It just shows how amazing the uh, the dragon dance strats are. Uh, looking at X Y War Time in fourth. Uh, is a three forty two fifty, which is like one second slower than uh, third. It was one second off tying with another Japanese runner. <laughs> which yeah, it's, oh yeah, because well, you got what well, you got a rock team miss into the thunder miss, which would have actually got him third, I'd assume. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah it's yeah, one well, second. It, it's not going to cost one second. Oh, it's it's going to obviously be more than one second time loss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, Buster Pokemon sixth. I just recognize like Buster, like Buster is like some of the world records in like the DS generation on D DS games, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Buster hadn't run the game before, so uh, it was looks like he's more or less starting to to learn the game. Bit of context. A lot, of, a lot of these runes are actually quite old from the looks of it. Yeah, and mm. if you... I just pulled up the board on my own. If you pull up the obsoleted runs, that was his first submitted run, so... Um... Yeah. That is, uh... Oh, that's okay. I mentioned earlier. Uh, sorry, that was just something that... Alright, there's, um... A lot of these, like... Is it just a case of a lot of like, because I think 
I think even it's like some of like is it Ringo with like gold like his gold world record it's it's like in a similar situation to like where it's just the names being put in like it really wasn't submitted by Ringo yeah right. basically a couple years ago we worked with the Japanese community to like move all of their leaderboards into speedrun.com um and at the time you know if they didn't have an account it just didn't get linked mm -hmm. um and so ringo obviously has an account now but at the time he, that he didn't so uh you see that kind of thing happen sometimes yeah i think it's like as well because if i remember correctly it's, it's not just ringo it's like ringo and then brackets jpn yeah which i assume means there's another ringo somewhere which i uh, unless ringo might have just been in an account before that actually is probably more sense it's not just have they didn't happen to be another ringo in pokemon i just had the thought yeah okay that was just me being a bit dumb uh so let's distract myself from that and talk about edgar in second place with the leave all round two i guess i missed that one too like <laughs> That's uh, that's fine. That run was I basically did it to get myself a time on each of the leaderboards. Um, that was the only only category I didn't actually have a um a time for in Oras. Um, aside from the emulator ones, which I actually do plan on getting. Um, the run was very mediocre. I basically treated it, I treated it like a no reset run but i wasn't like saving for hard fights if that makes sense um yeah. i was just taking whatever luck i got and then you know just trying to finish the run um so definitely improvable but it's uh you know yeah it'll it'll do for now it was like a 311 any percent time so it wasn't can be a lot better <laughs> all right and okay good put it back into the same spot um we talked about this one last month i didn't forget this one josh it was just there before but yeah you're third place uh with the marathon run didn't talk about this one because this guy was just a lot slower <laughs> than i was just very thinking behind at least not putting it down originally like i think to, like if it's like a three yes or like similar with like emulator if it's like a fair bit behind like the quote unquote main board or like the main uh console that it's run on. I don't typically put them on. Maybe I should. I don't know. Ask. Yeah. I mean I mean looking at the difference between like the two records being about what is that? Uh thirteen minutes. So this would be like uh, a five thirteen or so um on new three DS. So Still, you know, it's a it's a pretty solid time, but definitely not the same caliber as the one above. Apparently, Josh just wanted to beat Keys, which yeah, fair enough. Uh, Josh again, uh, with eighth in Ultra Ultra Moon. Um, how many runs are there of Ultra Soul? That's seven nosy. There's nine. Okay, fair enough. The six eleven o two. Uh. Is this is is that your first run? Have you done runs of Ultra Sun Ultra Moon before, Josh? I I just don't know. Uh, but moving on, whilst uh, waiting on Josh, if he decides to answer or not, Cat and with a ninth place, uh, with a three oh six thirty six. In let's go Eevee, any percent? Um. Yeah, I just think like again. The, uh, actually, I, I said earlier that the S is the most active. It's probably actually Let's Go, isn't it? That's most active right now, outside of probably Fire Red Leaf Green with the tournament going on. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily show it here with like the amount of PBs, but there are a lot of people doing runs. Um, I've been doing some runs. Etchy Caternies is up up there in top ten. Um, T Pat is learning the game. I think he actually has like a sub 320 um that's just not submitted it looks like or maybe not verified yet yeah maybe. um and then on the the pikachu side of things you have uh 
Kerbis and Jay Ash doing runs. I know Jim Freak has been doing some offline runs. So lots of um, lots of movement at the top level. So. Yeah, Cyan has uh, he's come back as well. Cyan actually, I think, just got a PB during the marathon. Um, got a 303.25 in EV. So uh, Echi is no longer second place. Sorry, Echi. <laughs> Poor Echi. Uh, yeah. I saw that. I saw the notification in PBs and clips, uh, maybe about an hour and a half ago. Okay, yeah. fresh off the block. Maybe, maybe there could be something happening with Let's Go soon, though. That might end up pushing maybe. things higher. Who knows? Actually, it was there. I just started scrolling, not even taking into account any of the other times. Uh, all obtainable, like eighth from Aspect with a six oh five fourteen. Uh. Like obviously, I, Joker's run hasn't been verified yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's actually a bit worried about it because it was a bit laggy in some places. Should be, yeah, should be fine. But so I guess I would make. Oh no, our space run still be eighth because Joker already has a time on the board. Um, but yeah, so like a anyone doing like all, all obtainable categories or recruit the moles in Mr. Dungeon case. Highly respect to them. Take a lot of time. And, like, to be fair, Let's Go is probably the most, oh, it has to be the most accessible one, surely. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 I just had a thought about maybe blue, but that's a lot of glitches. So, no, it's not. It's not accessible. Well, so, so blue has the, the glitch to catch them all, and then it has a glitchless, basically like all obtainables, where it's, you know, you catch every Pokemon that you can without glitching. Um, and it's actually longer than Let's Go's version. So, oh, really? Yeah, because there's no EXP share, so or there's like EXP all, but it doesn't work the way that would be good. So it's uh, lots of grinding in the Elite Four at the end of the run. Yeah, that is that is fair. Uh, Hume's record that was from last month mentioned that at the time, I believe. I think, or oh, it just wasn't mentioned because it, it was, was a one point two record before the one point two boards. So. Yeah. It, I think we mentioned it during the leaderboard roundup as, wow, this is a really good time with 1.2, but it wasn't, like, featured or anything. Yeah. Uh, Nerum with uh, the, like, the 420. I, I think the difference between, like, whom and second, quite large, yeah, Dorlin with a uh, 413.59. That, like, no one's really been pushing swords. At like the very very high level, Josh is like starting to maybe come in and he might push it more. But um, we'll we'll see. I I do want to get to Sol at some point, but I'm focusing on Shield first. Build my focus. I put money into it at this point. I bought the game, so I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, but actually, to uh, talk about Josh again, it's second place with a. Uh, 80% shield 1.2 was with a 4 14 25 knocked off the top spot uh, a couple of days ago by snare room uh, I'll throw me in there with third place third run uh, no, th not third place run first run that I finish the 4 16 22 which uh, was a pretty meh Arcanine and a pretty meh uh, Jilba I think it was just fairly lucky an execution. It can be a bad time. I'll get a bad time, hopefully. Um, second place for any percent with DLC. Uh, GL Phoenix. Like, for the 40306. They've been, like, climbing up stuff. Kind of quietly. Like, at least from what I've noticed. They're not someone who... I I'm trying to figure out, like, the... I started speaking, and I don't even know where this trip... <laughs> Thought, uh, train thought was going. It's basically it's. Uh, I've, I've just not heard about them as much as like, I guess aspect. I've been hearing aspect more with like DLC and then obviously who, right? Like leading the charge for sub four on the English side of stuff. But yeah, it's just like a name that. It's being like just quietly getting on with it and posting re like getting really good times. I think the previous, oh maybe, field. I think the second. I can just actually have a look right now. Now that I now that I've noticed this, I can keep doing this over and over. Uh, uh yeah, second in 
shield as well with a 40629. Like they're getting very good times. Like very, very good times. Uh and speaking of shield actually, fourth place for Tree Bark Timmy. Like an another name that i I know I've verified a few of their runs. And like sign like they're getting like starting to get more of the quicker times at this point as well. Uh, moving on to Mystery Dungeon, Rescue Team DX. I know it's like I can see the any percent win the male Japanese with Umanomi. Uh 31157. Is there a reason why this seems to be like we know like less is it less popular whom DX? RTDX? Or? Yeah. Um kinda it's it's in a bit of a weird state right now. There's like not really a whole lot going on with the newest one like a lot of the hype definitely died down around it um and like a lot of the uh like runners pushing for like the top times uh like we've all kind of moved on for the most part although flatter v is actually making a pretty strong push in any percent no wonder mill yeah Been going at it for a little while the place with a 305 52 um i guess like Quickly with the Calgary extensions, I assume a lot of these are just. I uh, yeah, I just assume a lot of these are. Like they're the only ones in the category. Also, Araya must be mad for just using Bulbasaur. <laughs> yeah, I assume that one means just Bulbasaur because it's the Venusaur one here. Yeah, <laughs> Shen and I did a in-person race once at a GDQ doing Bulbasaur. Our times were like four hours, so. That's 243 is actually pretty good. <laughs> I just the comment that was an experience. <laughs> I can imagine so. Uh but also like a ride with a 21257 with Venusaur Axions with a 20530. Oh, that was in last month. But I guess I wouldn't have mentioned it because I wouldn't have known about it. Um No catches. Is that just using a Squirtle? Uh, you'd have to use... Um... I was gonna say, you need something that can use Cut. I don't know what could oh. use Cut other than Bulbasaur. Unless... Because it does say specifically no catches. So is it maybe you pick, like... Can... Charizard learn Cut? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like just leafing through the run, it's Charmander is chosen. Right. And then you maybe get... Because you, you can get a Lapras, I think, in... Yeah, you can get the Lapras for Surf. Yeah. I guess... I don't know. That, that's probably good enough just to finish it. <laughs> probably wouldn't have... You wouldn't have Fly because Charizard doesn't learn it for some reason. Yeah. In, can you learn it in yellow? Or is it yeah, gold? Yeah, you can learn it in yellow. Alright, okay. Never understood that. But, now. Guys, again, I also don't understand why Charizard's not part dragon. But that's... Oh, you do get genius. Uh, Aerodactyl can learn oh. fly. And it's a gift. Uh, that is actually very smart. Nice, I like it. Um... So yeah, end the bomb with uh, Charizard custom starter. Tepich with a uh, Garyos custom starter. End the bomb with a Nido Queen custom starter. All world records. Maybe the only runs I don't know. Um, Gold Silver Crystal category extensions. Cruel with the old trainers Gold Silver world record. The seven twenty eight fourteen. Um. Apparently, pretty solid first run. No major hiccups anywhere. Knew where all the trains were from experience with the crystal. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, okay, no. no as he, I guess he maybe has done the same run, but in crystal. Crystal. Apparently, very happy to, oh, happy to get sub 7.30 on this run. And then... Game Boy Tower N64. Gold, silver, Japanese. They will know what Game Boy Tower is. Uh, it's playing it with like the in-game emulator. Um, in so it's the Pokemon Stadium 
emulator of the Game Boy games. So that's something that Japanese usually um, has a second, a separate like category for. And then one of the things that you can do with that, I don't know if this run does it, but like um, there are like speed ups and stuff that you can use on it. And so I know that there have been runs in the past using the, it's like Dodrio Tower or something like that. Hmm. So you can basically like play the game at like four times speed or whatever. Yeah. Like, I just recognize the game, or the name from um, Soul Shield. I know they've done Soul Shield runs. But uh, yeah, still that's a world record with a 114.24. Uh, don't know what middle of an update means for the con uh, for the comment. So oh, congrats to that or oh, for that. Um, Ruby Sapphire Emerald Fire really three and Calgary uh, extensions. Yeah, Gen one still, through three still haven't been split as of yet. War Tab is currently in the middle of it, as, far as I can as far as I remember. So hopefully it'll be done by next month. I think I think what I might have run into an issue with something. Um, but yeah, so world record for Nicole uh, Plopin with Primate Alt Main, world record for GZ with uh, Raichu Alt Main. Uh, they're actually the only two, so pretty short on that end. Uh, that was the run from earlier that was mentioned on the main boards. Uh, Toka with a uh, Manipulous Glitch's third place run with a 40155. Dexy is a god gamer. Not wrong. And then the Fated Ash is actually in sick with a 40914. Um, oh, eighth on them, uh, eighth if you include emulator, but sixth uh, with just console. So congrats as well. Oh, Joylin as well, actually. Now let's see that with an emulator time with a 432 another sword shield runner as well as probably as well as probably many other games but that's the name i recognize it for uh hard gold soul silver fifth for sparkle lantern with manipulous glitch list with a 349.24 um manipulous any percent uh gave me with a world record of a 221.47 and then sochi with a Second place time at 2.36.56, being dominated by the Italians that category. Uh, they won that, like... How many other runs are they? Uh, any percent? Okay, like a couple of other runners, but... They must have been working on it recently. But what is... I don't know, like, it's, there's not... Weaking is there in Hargold Soul Silver, right? Yeah, there is. Okay. <laughs> My lack of knowledge comes in once again. Uh, uh, Cruel with a Alt Main Lantern world record. Uh, service <laughs> <Fish>. speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a PMD meme, and it seems that Cruel's actually taken it. Uh, to Harkle Soul Silver, which I think Cheese did years ago as well. Interesting. I wonder if uh, I don't know if it is some idea or not. I, know it's, I just know like a bit off topic. Cheese has been doing uh, more casual stuff. You say like you mentioned that he'd been having like I, I I'm very for lack of better term difficulties with PMD in terms of like getting the times so all main focus. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, okay, yeah, so she's with a 7 11 27 two years ago. Heavily improved the bomb by Cruel. Yeah, so hopefully, we'll see uh, she's going back to runs once a bit of a break. Um, Battle Battle Factory open level gold, second from Gimme. So that must, so I guess. I don't know if the bounty was still on uh, up to that point, or if it still is on. But contra- uh, congrats to Gimme once again for a second in that. Like, that's just difficult to finish. Never mind, get like a 
solid enough time. Actually, say it's well, I mean, yeah, it's still solid enough time. It's like 20, 20 minute difference in like a effectively a purely RNG category. You got a bit of control, obviously, in what you do, and if you got the game knowledge, but still very impressive time. I think when I tried it, I couldn't even get a silver one. Because I'm not very good with the Pokemon knowledge. Uh, Manipulus Japanese. Uh, old record for Dexy. With a 322.54. Um, does anyone know what's used in that? If not, I, could, I might just quickly check. Mm, I mean, it could be Pup as well, but... I yeah, have no not clue. really looked at much. Uh, no, well, that's maybe pig knight from the looks of it. Oh, mm -hmm. epic! Yeah, I guess just a yeah. random stat. Um, Ember run. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Qtora uh, with black two, white two, Manipulus world record with a three forty five twenty one. Um. Time from boosting the game and ending the match. Okay, I guess. Wasn't really a category before, maybe? And it's just being introduced past month. Ooh, Baton Pass. <laughs> Baton Pass from JT Magic Man with a 523.18. Second place time there. Oh, that was only in March. Alright. Sneaking in there. Uh, any any thoughts or anything to mention about this one, Etiquette? Ultimate Skip Time. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, not, not too much to, to mention with this one. This one was an unrouted race between myself and the fourth gen gamer. It was, uh, it was a time. Let me tell you. Any plans to go back to it? <laughs> um, eventually would want to route it and go back, but I don't have any immediate plans for it. So, uh, fifth place for acquired Megastones 44, the false category, in my opinion. Five forty nine oh four. Actually, I think so. Is but again, I might be wrong with this. Isn't there actually forty six mega stones, but you just can't do one of them because it involves. So blast. there's actually forty seven total mega stones. All right. Um, one of them is Diancite, which is event only. Okay. And one of them is Garchompite, which we skip in the quote unquote all mega stones category because it requires getting like a thousand flags in your secret base which requires online and a lot of a lot of time so we just sort of skip that one okay and then this there's, there's no reason for, for everyone should put over two hours of context <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i the, the funny thing about this one i'm i'm not gonna do it because i already have a 44 time that i just have to upload I uh it doesn't tell you which megastone you have to skip, so you could skip any of them if you want. You could do like the, the two hours of contests and skip like I don't know the scissor megastone. If you I, really wanted to. I mean Maybe someone should do that. Not me. Obviously not me, but someone who's willing to push that boundary. Uh, so Sun Moon Carry Extensions, Alt Main Pokes, Ukan and New 3DS, World Type with a 55523. Oh, that was a run that was done ages ago. Sneaking in. Oh, unless it, maybe it was over. Um, it's, it's got like this X in, which. Yeah, it might have been re approved because of the bed timing stuff. Right. That would make sense. And then this one was also done last month as well. Gen 7 cat extension's got bed timing. I think, is it partly because of Cruel? Because I noticed this. Like, it's like, what have is forced to retime the other runs and make the timing line up with them. Who is the person that forced that? Either way. Uh, all trainers, all three yes as well, and uh, just make it a bit, bit longer. The cruel with a twelve twenty one fifty nine. It was um, it was the last month, but in that, again, all trainers also I feel like deserves a shout. Pops up. 
Uh, okay, Pokemon League rematch. Is, is this a new category? That's basically like Elite Four round two for Let's Go. Uh, it's not new, but that's basically what it is. It's a. It's not just Elite Four round two though. Um, you can rematch all the gym leaders as well. So it's fight everybody in the quote unquote Pokemon League again. Okay. And I no idea how good of a time is it. Uh, it's pretty good. It looked like uh the comment mentioned it had a three oh five any percent time so um and then i don't know what route he was doing but um the route i was doing that got the 354 last year or the year before was uh basically do any percent go straight to cerulean cave grab mewtwo and then just sweep all the gym leaders with mewtwo um so yeah uh 351 is really good yeah and for most of it's obviously it beats Josh by 10 seconds or Jay Ash. So, very, very close world record. Managed to get it. And fourth place for Aspect in Battle Pass with a 320 38. What was a run? Still need to finish it for Soul Shield. Like, finish rounds in that. Um, Let's see. Old mains without eternity is cheekers. Again, this was Josh did this last month. Oh, okay, not last. It, uh, two months ago at this point, it's May now. But with a four fifty fifty seven. But for those who do not know what uh, what cheekers is, it's an in game trade squavet. That's awful. As, far as I'm aware, like it's got like the wrong nature for. Uh, what a squad that would be better with. But uh Ash was crazy enough to rouse it out and he's got a time. Fair play. Fair play to Josh. Uh trade all main Blastoise snaring with the world record. That's been a few times. I think this one actually like kind of smashed the other times out the water. But like I think it was like rerouted to, and that's part of the reason behind it. Snaring with a 357.05 uh, is a very good run. Apparently, though, I guess it's still beatable with three extra encounters, one optional trainer. But yeah, very, very impressive time. And I think anything really under sub four is like going to be pretty good, obviously, depending on the Pokemon. But it does beat the other ones by a good amount. So I think. Very solid run. Uh, what are with trade on main Lycan Rock world record? Josh with trade on main Mantine world record. Uh, that was the last month as well, but still, yeah. Uh, Serum again with a. Oh, that one, yeah, that one was done a while ago, but uh, trade on main Nine Tails alone. Uh, I guess something that wasn't mentioned because it's not really a massive thing, but there's been like a rule change allowing some of the. Um, so like there's some items that take a, like such a long time to get that just for like making it because like trade on me is more like a fun idea behind it. Um so there's been a few items that have been allowed to like be used to pre-evolve Pokemon. So the Ice Stone is one of them. Um Dawn Stone, I think is one of them. Uh like the Gal Galerica twigs. Uh like the Slowpoke Evolutions. And then I think the Apples as well. I think that's everything. So you can get like the Evolutions of um, Applin. Uh, the only one that has been done and it was like routed a while ago was Ninetales, like the Alone Form of Ninetales. Um, I, I, people have said they look like they might, or they, they wanted to do other ones. We'll see if they're done or not. But either way, people now have the option to do so. Um, but yeah, looking at this, uh, all trainers world record for sword with, uh, suits me, I uh, suits me with a 649.16. Uh, that's been split from just all trainers without like a version difference to having like a version between sword and for shield. I was just, 
uh, it was re- like Susumi just asked, and Erika was okay with it, and Erika's the only other person with a run. And all trains for sword. So, we ended up just splitting it. And it makes sense to have a split, at least in my opinion. That there's different trainers between the two routes. So, justifiable enough to me. Um, having a quick look. Don't need to go over mine. That that should be in last. That was in last month, I think. Don't know why it pops up again. Maybe because it was verified on the third. It was like literally verified on the day of the podcast. Uh, first place in Dynamax Adventure. Uh, with Nivadra with a five oh five. Good for them. I haven't seen the run. I don't know what they went through and what Pokemon they got, but still though, I think that was. I think that was a uh, record taken from Aspect. I didn't need to be looked into. It's still uh, pretty impressive to get a world record in that because I think it was pretty optimal. They pre optimize it's pretty difficult to get on a, a quick run in that category. Or at least to run that quickly. Uh, everything in the stadium category extensions, which also includes Battle Revolution. Is there a reason? I don't know if you like. Do you do Battle Revolution Doom or like have anything for, like Revolution um, stuff? I yeah, I've done some runs of Battle Revolution. Um, well, but the reason why it's included with like the Stadium category extensions because basically Battle Revolution is very very similar, like playstyle wise to, uh, yeah, just other Stadium games. So it's just kind of part of the Stadium series, just in a bit of a looser way. Fair enough. Isn't, I think Stadium and Calgary Ascensions are like massive, aren't they? <laughs> uh, as big as Mystery Dungeon, I don't think, but... That I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever actually looked at uh, Stadium Category Extensions. Let's have a look now. Yes, <laughs> but a lot of them are empty. Hmm. So, okay. Um... Yeah, so all records from uh, by Griffin in Transfers Pocket Monster Stadium 2, uh, Jim Lee the Castle Round 1, Falkush in Kids Club, uh, Hyper 9 wins, Mini Game Champions in Stadium 2, and very hard 9 tokens as well by Falkush, and then Nally Turtle with the all battle passes world record with a 50411. Uh, Apparently they will be back after getting three deaths. Um, Pokemon Training Card Game Calgary Extensions. Mentioned this run earlier, but I guess it makes sense seeing as the other runs with Char- uh, Charmander. But Bulbasaur Friends World Record with a 47 47. Uh, Franksy with the any game, uh, any percent new game plus. Uh, third place. The 54 46. Uh, do you know anything about New Game Plus Zoom? Not, no worries. <laughs> um, my best guess would be, uh, having like all of your cards and then just fighting all the trainers again. Uh, but no, I've never seen nor done that category. All right, fair enough. Franksy also have a second place in any percent hard mode with a one ten fifty five, so good for them. Uh, mentioned this run from the uh, in the marathon section, so won't go over that again. But Quo with magic heart percent N sixty four world record with a fourteen thirty four. Assume I m- I assume that must be just take a picture of magic heart surely, but it's like it's the forty minute time or uh, fourteen minute time. Uh, going on to the fan games, I, ass- uh, I assume, yeah, Ian has left at this point because he's busy, probably, uh, probably preparing at this moment for the marathon run. So very quickly, just going over the fan games. So, Pokemon Gold Silver SNES, any percent both, JoJo Retro Gamer with a six thirteen, and that's kind of really the only. One that I saw that could really be mentioned, like a a top time. Uh, 
A run from a while ago with Pock and DX, though. From Yuhum in Green League. World record with a 1650. How are Pock how, how are Pock uh, Pock and runs? Um, that, I've never seen a run of it. <laughs> it's honestly, it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, as a speedrun, it's a little bit stranger because, uh, yeah, I don't know, just speedrunning a fighting game is a little bit weirder because like especially since you're going against ai uh you don't really need to do a lot of like the massive combos or whatever you're really just doing what is doing the most damage and just spamming that really uh but yeah i i just wanted to play pokin for a little bit and i was doing any percent runs uh but it starts off with green league every time and just while i was trying to do some any percent runs to see if i could beat shady's time uh i ended up improving my green league record from like 17 like 13 or so uh down to 1650 which was actually kind of crazy because i thought that like my uh my previous pb was actually like really really good so improving that by more actually was kind of nice and then speaking of any percent you've got the second place time there with a 226 11 just a bit short uh, of Shady's time by like 40 seconds on the looks of it. Yeah, I lost a, t a lot of time in uh, mid game. If it wasn't for that, like mid game and Mewtwo, uh, if it wasn't for that, I probably could have like been Shady's time by a decent bit. So maybe at some point. Yeah, and that is the end of the roundup. Uh, I think probably went over this a lot longer than we probably should have still. But it was fun having like all the conversations about it all, at least for me. Uh, so just the last couple of mentions before the uh, go on, uh, before we end the podcast. There is still the Fire Red Leaf Green tournament going on. Uh, there's a really, really big match, uh, base even, coming up on the on the Tuesday, I think it is. Between Shiru, uh, JP, and Pickle. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting race. But there's also a few other races. There might even be one. No, it's, uh, the one for today, I think, finished. Uh, it will have finished at this point. But definitely check out. It's uh, on the Speed Gaming channels. Uh, any last words from anyone else? Uh, I've got nothing. Likewise. Alright. So I guess in that case, thank you everyone for winning and watching. I don't know how to outro. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess uh, I don't... What is, what's the next Saturday? So I guess the next podcast will be on the 5th of June. I think that's the first Saturday of next month. Um... Yeah, I can't think of anything else that would stop it. I mean, yeah, I can't think of anything that would stop it from happening then. But until then, I hope everyone has a good uh, like rest of your day, rest of your evening, rest of your month. I guess at that, at that point. Yeah. I feel very awkward doing outros. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you.